Aha! So that was fake. Um, welcome to, <laughs> it was already solved. Welcome to uh, Coding Challenge on the Coding Train. <laughs> Rubik's Cube. So today, um, a while back in April 30th, 2018, Niels Webb suggested a Rubik's Cube solver using a neural network. By the way, this is the green side. It's not the white side. See? <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, I'm really interested in this. And I actually picked up a Rubik's Cube over the weekend. I've been learning to solve it. Uh, it takes me at least a half an hour, but I do do it. I don't have to watch a video while I'm doing it. Uh, I did have to watch a bunch of videos to figure it out. I'm getting off topic. Um, and, but I really want to explore this idea. What types of AI machine learning algorithms can I apply to solve a Rubik's Cube? This will be interesting to try at some point on the channel, but there's a lot of steps I need to get to before I can get there. So what I'm going to start with today is just actually creating a Rubik's Cube simulation. Um, Simon Tiger also posted an issue showing all the different kinds of Rubik's Cubes configurations that are out there. Apparently there's this 28 by 28 by 28 one. I have some of these at home. They're super fun to play with. Um, anyway, but so, and so let me close all this stuff out. I should also reference uh, CodeBullet. CodeBullet is a YouTube channel that has many different coding, exciting, adventurous topics. Um, and uh, CodeBullet has a video using a particular algorithm to solve a Rubik's Cube, then makes a giant Rubik's Cube. So if you want to get the 16-minute um, version of everything that's going to take me the next 700 days to figure out in one video and be entertained, I would definitely recommend the CodeBullet one. All right, so closing that out, I am going to start here in processing. Processing, if you're not familiar, is a Java-based development environment for creative coding, images, animations, all sorts of stuff. I use it a lot on my channel. I'm pretty sure that's what CodeBullet used for, uh, for his Rubik's Cube. Um, I'm going to add the setup and draw functions. I'm going to add a uh, window that's 400 by 400. And I'm going to put in P3D. So P3D, I definitely need to use a 3D renderer because I'm going to represent <laughs> the Rubik's Cube in three dimensions. Let's make a, uh, I'm going to call, let's make a class called box. I'm going to call each one of these little, little cubes inside the larger cube, each cell of this 3x3 three three grid. I'm just going to call it a box. And uh, so I need a constructor. And I need to know where is it, well, there's, I need to know its index in some type of like maybe multi-dimensional array. But for drawing it, I, I really just need to know where it is in the, the virtual 3D space. So let's, when I create it, let's give it an X, a Y, and a Z. And then also I need a sort of a side length. So I don't know whether I need the full side length or a half length. That's gonna, definitely going to be something that's going to come up. But let's just assume right now that I initialize it with a full side length. Um, and then uh, I'll, I'll use a P vector, a vector object for the position and a float for that side length. Let's just call that side. I'll call that length, and uh, I'll, I'll use an underscore here to make this a different variable name. So now I'm going to say position is a new p vector, x, y, z, and the um, this needs a semicolon here, and the length is equal to this. So then I'm going to I'm going to write a function called show, um, and I'm just here. I'm going to say uh, push matrix, which saves the transformation state, pop matrix, which restores the transformation state. Oh my god, what's a transformation state, you might be asking. So I'll tell you what it is. What I need to do is I need to say translate to position.x, position.y, position.z. This is basically positioning what I'm about to draw, this box with this length, at this position. And I have a feeling people who are watching this live in the chat are telling me this isn't going to work because I need to color the different face faces differently. I'll get there. I mean, I have to get there at some point. But let me just use the p processing box function, which will just put a box right there. So in order for each box's translation to not affect the others, that's what push matrix and pop matrix does. And I'll put something in this video's description to more about matrix transformations if that is new topic for you. All right. Let's just say uh, fill 255, stroke 0, uh, stroke weight uh, 8. And then I have this box class. So now I need to make a cube object. It's not really a cube object. I'm making it right now. I could make a cube class. I probably should. But just for simplicity right now, let me make a three-dimensional array for rows, columns, and 
What's the other one? <laughs> I don't know, if you have a third one, it's the, it's the z-axis, I suppose. Um, and this is going to be, let me make a variable called like dim for dimensions, because in theory, if I do this right, we could just change that one variable and have a much bigger cube. Uh, equals new uh, box, which is uh, dimensions, ah, dimensions by dimensions by dimensions. Then I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to do a triple nested loop. Uh, with i, i, j, k, uh, i, j, k, i, j, k, i, j, k, and then um, I am going to say cube index i, j, k is a new box at some x, y, and z with some side length. Okay, so how do I figure this out? If this is going to be at 0, 0, 0, this is going to be at 1, 0, 0. If I go down here, I'll be at like 1, 1, 0, back, maybe the last row. Anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> it's like a grid, but with another dimension. I think I'm doing this right. So, but I need a side length. Let's just make that up right now. Length is, let's say it's 10. So the x would be length times i, uh, the, and the y would be length, and I might have my axes wrong, but whatever I call x, y, and z axis, eh, whatever, they're all just different axes, uh, i, j, k, and so I'm going to say box x, box y, box z, um, x, y, z, and then length. And then, I mean, there's no way this is right. <laughs> Like, how could I possibly get, the, oh, and I need another curly bracket. Uh, and then now if I grab this for loop and I put it in draw, but all I say now is cube i, j, k, show. I almost want to keep these in another array that's just a one-dimensional array for simplicity. But uh, let's see how this goes. Hey, look. That's kind of like the Rubik's cube thing up there in the corner. So one thing I want to do, I definitely want to do, is I want to add, I, uh, well, I want to first give it a background. Uh, background 200, uh, or like one, I'll use my number 51. And then I probably want the side length to be much bigger. And let's just run this again. I don't know, and you can see, oh, it's sort of up there. And I think I need a larger uh, space here. Um, so I need to position it in the center so I can actually see it. And there's a variety of ways to do that. I could just translate to the center, but I'm going to use a library. I think I have it installed. Import library. I don't. This is great. I'm going to use a library called PZCAM. Uh, and I'm going to hit install. PZCAM for processing easy camera is a way, a library that allows you to very quickly get a mouse camera interaction where I can spin around a 3D scene in processing. I've used it in other videos before. So I think if I just say uh, PZ cam cam, and then if I say something like cam equals new PZ, PZ, thank you to Jonathan Feinberg who created this library, PZ cam this. And I forget, this is something to do with like how zoomed out or zoomed in it is. Oh, import. I need to import the library, uh, which I can uh, uh, do automatically like this, import library uh, PC cam. Was it there and I just didn't see? <laughs> there, ah, there we go, look. Ah, oh, look, hey, <laughs> Cody Challenge finished, thank you. No, there's a lot more to do here, but look at this. That kind of looks like a Rubik's Cube. Now it's rotating around its little like corner there. I want it to rotate around the center. So what I need to do is I need to have an offset and the offset is going to be uh, half of the full width. So the full width is dimensions times length, and then if I divide that by two, so if I then subtract out the offset, that should give me our nice little cube. No, that's not right. Oh, because uh, here, I, I think this is my like off by, I think the box function is probably using the half width. Oh, but then that'll be off now. No, ah, that's not right. Oh, what have I done? I think I have this off by dividing by two. <laughs> All right, here's the issue. I actually just made a little diagram. If the box, these are just uh, two-dimensional rectangles, were drawn from the corner like they are in rectangles 
uh, 2D rectangles in processing, this would work because I'm just shifting everything over and the middle one is, but they're actually, the middle one is now placed in the center because I'm shifting over by, the total width is 30, I'm shifting over by 15, we've got half here, half there. But they're not, they're actually drawn from the center. So by shifting them over, I end up with the first two on one side and the other. So I actually need to shift it, I need, I need, I'm, I'm, there's, a, there's a half of a length that's incorrect. So there's probably a smarter way to fix this formula, but right now I'm just gonna add another half length here. Uh, and, um, or the offset actually, that's, that's silly. I should really add it in the offset. So length divided by two plus this. Um, and now we should have, <laughs> oh no, minus. I need to shift it over, but it's in the offset. It's, the offset is a little bit less. Dimensions minus one, <laughs> that's the issue. Hold on everybody. Uh, this is so silly. Change this to 0.5, and this is actually uh, dimensions minus one, times length, and then half of that. And now, we should have it, there we go. There's my Rubik's Cube in the center. All right, and I'm being told, by the way, that these are called uh, QBs. So I'm gonna change that. Uh, class, QB, QB, and uh, QB, QB and QB. So step one is complete, but as you'll see, if we look at this, whoops, if we, if we look at this Rubik's Cube, each face has a different color. There are only six colors. There's white, red, well, so white on the top, yellow on the bottom, and then red, blue, uh, orange, and green. So let me make, um, let me make an array with those colors. Um, I think what I can do is just say, uh, there's a data type in processing called color. It's actually just an integer. Um, and I'm going to, let's come up with an order. I'm gonna say top, bottom, I don't know if this is a good order to do, but top, bottom, uh, I'm gonna think of the top as always white. So top, bottom, and then right, left, front, back. Uh, right, left, front, back. And I know there's like actual Rubik's Cube notation and I'm probably getting that a little bit off. I think it's actually not top, bottom, it's up, down. Up, down, right, left, front, back. Okay, I'm back. I, I, I finished off the colors for this array and I'm using the order up, down, right, left, front, back. And I am just right now using the convention as white being on the top. And I know there's some different ways of looking at the cube. You can think of yellow as the top and white as the bottom, but I'm gonna use yellow as the top and green as the front. So I have these colors. So how do I then apply these colors to the different faces of these little cubies? I love that they're called cubies. It's like, that's like the greatest thing I learned today. Um, so, unfortunately, I will not be able to use this box function anymore. However, I can use uh, my own begin shape, end shape. So what I really want to do, instead of just using the box function to draw the full three-dimensional QB, I just need to use quads. I can use four quads. I can probably use rectangle function or, or different things, but I could do one quad, well, it's more than four. I need to do six. One quad, another quad, another quad, another quad, and another quad. Um, now, of course, if we look at the actual cube itself, each of these corner pieces, you can only see three faces. These other pieces in the middle on the top, you can only see two faces. But I'm just gonna do all the faces for each QB. We can, we, can, we can optimize later if need be. So let's just do one. So in other words, if I say, begin shape quads, then I can create the vert, ver and then let me just say the um, r equals um, length divided by two. So now I'm gonna take that side length and divide it by two because I wanna set the vertices offset from the center. Negative r plus r, negative r plus r. So I should be able to do for the first one, vertex, uh, negative, negative r, negative r, zero. And I'm gonna keep the z at zero for this first one. And then, um, so let me just diagram this, right? If this is what I'm doing, this is 
you know, negative one, negative one. This is uh, one, negative one. This is one, one, and this is a negative one, one. So basically I just need to set all of these vertices to draw that quad. Um, and the negative r, r, uh, what did I say it was? r, negative r, 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 uh, negative r, r. Uh, and now if we run this, we should see, oh, whoa. What did I just do? So first of all, oh, you know what I'm doing? Uh, I'm still drawing the box. <laughs> yeah, take out that box. Thank you very much. And there we go. We can see, am I, and we can see now I have just those front faces. So all I need to do is do exactly the same thing. I just need to do six of these. So with different, um, with different axes. So if I put zero, 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 and take the, the, basically take the zero off of the Z now. I have got, oh, wait a second. This is not right. <laughs> oh! Oh, I'm so silly. This isn't zero. This is either at negative R. This is one side. And then this same face, oh, so comment this one out, would be, at R, right? These don't cross the center of each little QB. They go along the edges. So the Z has to be, so now we can see, now this is right because it's a three by three cube. It looks like, why is there four? But these are, these are the front and back or the left and right or the top and bottom, however you want to consider it. And so now if I do this with um, negative R, of course, of course, And then the same thing with positive r, right? There are six faces. There we go. Now I have my Rubik's cube, but without the left or right or the top or bottom, I have no idea what the orientation is. So, but the y-axis basically needs to be fixed. So this is z being fixed. Um, this first one was z being fixed. This one is x being fixed. So I'm going to say a z. Z fixed, uh, X fixed, and now I need to do one that's Y fixed. And that is going to be, um, so this one I copied, what did I copy? I copied Z fixed, so all I need to do is fix Y. So negative R, negative R, negative R, 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 and then this should be uh, negative R, negative R, uh, R, negative R, 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 negative R, R, and same thing here, negative R, negative R, R, negative R, 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 negative R, R. Look, there it is again. There's our cube, but all different faces. So I have no idea. Let's just make a total guess here. What if I say just for this, so let me do, let me do a fill on all of these. Fill 255. Fill 255. Fill 255. Fill 255. Ah. Fill 255. Fill 255. So now they're all white, but I can say, I remember I have my colors, and what I'm actually gonna do, let's make some, I, there's thing, let's make some variables that just keep these. Let's do top, oh, let's do up. Oh, these are key words in, um, <laughs> these are key words in processing. Uh, let's do them all three letters. Up is zero. Uh, down is one. I just wanna like keep track of these constants, final, is that a thing? I don't know. I don't know how Java works. There's probably like an enumerable. Down, right, left, uh, front, and back. This might, I mean this is sort of unnecessary, but let's do that. So now, up, down, right, left, front, back. So in theory, I want to say fill, if this is the top, I have no idea if it is, whatever the top is, fill uh, colors top, up, <laughs> up. 
Yes, that's the top. It's facing, whoa. Oh yeah, it's white. I shouldn't pick white as the first one. <laughs> Phil, colors are all already white. Down. <laughs> all right, let's find where that is. Is it going to be on the bottom? No, it's facing us, but that's fine because the way I drew it, this is really the top over here, I think. So that's fine. I mean, I, whatever the, the point is, I just have to be consistent. Uh, colors. So this would be if Y is fixed. Um, if Y is fixed, we're doing, oh no, if, if Z is fixed. <laughs> Z is fixed, it's front and back. So behind is back. This, of course, this is front. And then if Y is fixed, it's not really fixed, then we have top. Um, that's, that's actually bottom. And then this uh, would be, and it's down. <laughs> and this is up. Boy, this is taking a crazy amount of time. <laughs> I can't believe how much time this is taking. And this, everybody in the chat I'm sure is going crazy with better solutions to this. Uh, X, this is left, and this is right. All right, let's see. Uh, oh, hold on. <laughs> let's look here. I have white, green, red, orange, yellow, blue. Ah, red and orange are in the wrong place. Red and orange are in the wrong place. So actually, actually, drawing it is correct. I just have the color swapped incorrectly here. So this should be orange on the left, and red should be here on the right. Let's check it. Here we go. All right. So I'm looking at green with yellow next to it. So I'm now holding it the same way. Green with yellow next to it. So if I go uh, orange, red, white, and on the back, blue. So I have now drawn the Rubik's Cube. <laughs> um, I have uh, made some of you happy who, are, who think that the top is yellow because the top is yellow here because I drew it with the y-axis flipped, even though it says top is white in my code. Who knows? I'll figure that out later. Um, something that would really improve this would be using enums, enumerables, instead of these list of constants. It's a little tricky to do that in processing because of the way that processing wraps Java. Maybe I'll fix that up when I refactor this later. But, um, but in the next video, I'm going to work on actually trying to figure out how to do a rotation, how to turn and move the stuff around and actually have all the data move as well so that I could shuffle the Rubik's Cube. So if at least in this first part, if I can now then make the moves, then I can do another part where I can shuffle it and then play the shuffle back in reverse to make it look like it's being solved. That'll be fun. Another thing that's really missing here is that um, you'll notice on an actual Rubik's Cube that the, um, the, the, the faces that you can't see are actually colored black. Whereas once I start rotating these, all those other colors are actually there internally. And in fact, there's like a cube in the center you'll never see. It has the colors on it in mine. But eh, I think I've done enough. I will see you in the next video.